by Joyce to be the master of ceremonies for this most austere, austere, uh, this this auspicious occasion, which I volunteered to do, and it is really a pleasure to be here around anyone who has a thought process that's somewhat akin to that which I stumbled on probably 30 years ago or so on the 16th of February 1984 I was at my first libertarian function ever at that very building next door to here it was the occasion of the Libertarian State Convention, and that evening was the presidential candidate ball. So on the 16th of February, uh, I showed, and at that, they had a crowd, it was great. It was the most Libertarians I've ever been around at once, except at the national conventions, and it went downhill from then. <laughs> and when it was over with, a big fellow in a three-piece blue suit, looked like an IBM exec, which we found out later he was, he said to me, do you believe in the institution, initiation of force, fraud, or coercion to achieve political or social acts? And I said, no, I don't. He said, well, I'm Marshall Fritz, and I'll pay you to do this. Marshall Fritz signed me up that night, so now I've already claimed to be a libertarian, and now I'm a paid libertarian, and Marshall Fritz is the guy that did it. From that moment on, to the day Marshall passed away, he and I were in sync. The whole process of being a black libertarian was a unique experience, to say the least. One of the jokes I used over a period of time is there are only three black libertarians on earth. Thomas Sowell, who won't even admit it, Walter Williams, who keeps it quiet, and me, and we made a pact never to get on the same plane at the same time. <laughs> so we all lose us all at once. Well, fortunately, I can say since that time, there are several hundred of us, and the term black has been set aside for African American and whatever. We were, when I was young, with a capital N, we were Negroes. That was my mother. My mother passed away in 2002, and to that day she said, I'm a Negro, because she looked like Selma Hayek, and she looked like she was from India. So people didn't think she's something else, and might say, no, I am a Negro. She was proud of it. But we hung out, we were colored. And we colored bags and stuff, and all the rest. And so it evolved to whatever you want to call us. But I personally have evolved past being a libertarian. I'm past the politics. I'm past the belief that the coercive system is something that we should be advocating. I still support some people. <laughs> I support many people who are on this path to get to where we are. I understand why you would think it's necessary to play that game, because we've been brainwashed to believe that to be the case. I saw a headline in an article online just now recently, that's, and I didn't read it in detail, and some of you may have read it or seen it. It said, capitalism saved the Chilean miners. And I did read the article, but I, I suspect there was some evidence to back that up. That's the kind of thing that the people in the other rooms and outside in the streets ought to know something about. Somehow we have not been able to share and glean that kind of information to people. Uh, Maybe something about, uh, I'll, give you, I'll give you a reason. Most of us who believe in sovereignty as individuals don't have the, 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 the desire to proselytize. So capitalism saved the Chilean miners, and I have to read further on that. Sky and I were speaking, and Joyce was speaking, and Shirley and I were speaking, and one of the things that Sky said, and I thought this was quite relevant, once we come away from politics and our understanding of individual sovereignty, we have to call it something. And I find it to be quite compatible to call it the movement. Because the movement is made up of at least a dozen or more different groups or thinking of people are thinking processes that are all compatible regarding what is now becoming a popular word or term, as Marshall Fritz said it would, libertarianism. What's happening is the same thing that anybody who knows political history knows, is that the word can be stolen from you. So what has happened with the word libertarian in my 30 plus years 
is that it has been stolen in the political front by the right wingers or by the uh, Republicans who are dissatisfied with what was going on in their group, etc. So now when you look at the platform of the Libertarian Party, it has very little to do with libertarianism. So now that the popular term is becoming a part of the masses, as Marshall Fritz shared, would eventually occur, I don't want any parts of it. And I have a little bit of problem even sending money to it. And Joe Librian and I, and he was just the past chair of Orange County Libertarian Party, of which I was years ago, I said to Joe, I don't, I can't come to the meeting to help you get elected even though I love you. Because I don't want to make, I don't want to be an agent to your becoming a part of the coercive system that uses force under the guise of helping you. The three biggest lies in the world. Of course I'll still love you in the morning. Um, the check is in the mail, that's number two. And the third one is I'm here from the government and I'm here to help. <laughs> they create the problem and then appeal to the masses to tell them why they should let them fix the problem they created. And I, I think that we as, thank you sir, I think that we as enlightened people have to now begin to come together to figure out how to save ourselves when this thing collapses, you notice I didn't say if, when this thing collapses, and secondarily, after the collapse, or by some great revelation, it doesn't collapse because of the turnaround that we lead, we have to somehow figure out how to share our ideas and our ideals with other people who have the tendency to understand that government is a bad thing. Movement, uh, the movement of people calling themselves former libertarians, anarchists, that scares the hell out of people. Marshall Fritz said, don't use the three, that's one of the three A words never to use. So I use anarcho capitalist, but I've evolved to use anarcho libertarian capitalist. Because I somehow like the word capitalist because it tells me that Marx, even though he invented the word, if you understand what Ayn Rand was talking about, I'm happy to be a capitalist. Yeah. Woo! Isn't that amazing? A black guy using the word Ayn Rand on a podium in front of people. Yeah. That's got to be first for some of you. That's like, Guten Tag, mein lieber Freund. Wie geht es Ihnen? So gut, danke. Und schreiben Sie das an der Tafel. So how did he learn this? Oh, you're an army boy. I said, no, I've never been in the army. I was a conscientious objector. Well, damn, I ain't learned to talk like that. <laughs> never thinking that you could go to college and take a course in German. <laughs> and have an ear good enough to be able to speak words and come out and have a Bavarian accent, no less, because my professor was from, from, from uh, Bavaria. So it's a southern German accent. Jawohl, my man. He says, he speaks Deutsch. Yeah. Okay, it's going to be a fun couple of days with me as the MC. I hope. <laughs> so you go on the other side and grab people by the lapels and bring them on in here and say, "We got something to show you. We got a guy, something you have never seen in your life." Okay, the movement is is made up, we think, of as small as twenty five thousand people worldwide. If you look at what Ken Skolin has done and his uh, efforts of Jonathan Gullible and traveling around and putting it into various languages. What Vince Miller did uh, for years with the SIL, ISIL. What uh, the Libertarian Party did when it was a Libertarian group. What various organizations, even Cato in their proper uh, uh, roles and all. What all of those groups together have done and all of the people who have contributed money or have been involved or have been active, whether they call themselves libertarians or not, is only about 25,000 people, we uh, estimated. I wish somebody could show me it was double that or four times that. So we could say, let's take the 100,000 to a million or something, but we're still, the advocates for self-government is trying to know. But of that cadre of people, 
our movement exists, and it exists, I believe, correctly as the counterbalance to the absurdity of the of the the tyrannical forces of people calling themselves government. Um, and, and, and if we can still do this with words instead of with arms, I think it should be our effort. If we can continue to do this with ideas and not with force, I think it should be our effort. It, uh, people say, well, <laughs> where are you going? I said, I'm going to Libertopia, I'm going to see. I'm, I'm looking around the room and I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling a little better now. Because I'll speak to one or more persons. <laughs> I'm past speaking in the mirror. I don't do that anymore. But one or more person, so we've got quite a cadre here. All right. The movement. Let's make it grow. Let's try to understand it. It could be called voluntarists. I like that one recently. We believe in individual sovereignty. Well, what are you? I'm a voluntarist. I said that to Shirley last night. She said what? And she's pretty articulate. She does crossword puzzles in her sleep. She does scramble backwards and forwards. And she said, what, pray tell, is a voluntarist. I said, that's what we have evolved to become. We are people who believe in sovereign individuality, non-initiation of force, <coughs> free markets, good stuff like that, contracts. We don't have to have somebody with a, with a gun telling us always what we should do as free people. The definition of free people is individual sovereignty. We all know this. A couple of you are just showing for the first time. Trust me, you'll understand it eventually. Hopefully that eventually will not be too late.